When you let go of doubt, quiet the inner dialogue, and conquer the ego, you will see the miracles you've conceived of manifest in your life. To trust in yourself is to trust in the wisdom that created you any time you voluntarily let go of control. You gain an access to power when you don't know what you want. You've reached a state of desirelessness. Reflect on what you feel is lacking in your life and discuss it with your friends. If you focus your attention and energy on it during phone conversations and go to bed thinking about what is missing, you will keep attracting that lack into your life. The more you dwell on it, the more it will persist. Focusing on what is missing ensures it remains that way. Therefore, the first step to change is shifting this mindset, which is the initial obstacle to achieving what I refer to as intention. Secondly, if you put your thoughts on what is, you will continue to attract what is into your life. A teacher 2,300 years ago named Patanjali in India suggested a meditation called Japa. This meditation involves taking your attention and inner energy off of what is, and focusing on what you intend to manifest, you repeat the sound that is in the name of God as an inner mantra. By repeating this sound, you draw energy from the external source from which you originated, aligning it with your intentions to help manifest your desires. This technique can be applied to various goals, such as acquiring money, becoming pregnant, or selling your home. John the Baptist writes in the New Testament, The opening line of the book of John in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God as strange as it may. Sound based on your conditioning. The repetition of the sound as an inner mantra is a way of getting in the gap and attracting energy into your life to have whatever you need. Show up. It is a powerful meditation practice. If you train your mind to work like this to put your attention on the circumstances of your life, you'll continue to attract more of what is self-actualizing. People strive to fulfill their potential and never focus on undesirable realities. They understand that their mind has created every problem they perceive. If they dislike their current circumstances, they avoid dwelling on them by focusing on what is, and since thoughts attract more of the same, they would only perpetuate those unwanted situations. Therefore, self-actualizing individuals direct their thoughts away from what they despise to avoid attracting more of it. Thirdly, you cannot put your attention or thoughts on what always has been. If you put your thoughts or energy on what always has been, what always has been will continue to show up in your life. Your life is a boat heading up the river and the wake is the trail. Left behind the present moment. Energy being generated by the engine is what makes the boat go in this direction, not the wake. You cannot think about and put your attention on what they want or expect for you. If you want that to change in your life, there are many people who have opinions about what you should or shouldn't be, especially relatives if you put your thoughts on what they want for you and you don't like what they want. You'll continue to attract more of what they want, for you must learn to leap into the unknown and focus solely on what you intend to manifest for yourself. Each thought you have carries energy, and since everything in the universe is energy, your thoughts have a powerful impact. If you encounter a thought that weakens you, avoid it. Remember everything in this universe is energy in the final analysis. It's all between you and God. It was never between you and them. Anyway, how can you surrender, let go, and become detached from the outcome while still having the things you want come into your life? It's about shifting the focus off of myself and on to serving others. When you do this, all the things you chased after and worked hard for begin to chase after you and show up in your life to create miracles. You have to banish the doubt. Most of us have been raised on doubt and beliefs in what we can't accomplish. We need to shift from a belief system to a knowing system. Our journey consists of two parts. The physical, which begins instantly at conception, and the observer, the eye that constantly watches. This observer is metaphysical, existing beyond the physical realm. You must become comfortable with this observer and understand that your thoughts shape your reality to shift your awareness. Start by visualizing your desires, such as a peaceful drive home, as you focus on it begins to manifest. 
This shift arises from recognizing that your life is part of an intelligent system, and everything that has happened to you so far is part of that intelligence embrace the past and see it as perfect beliefs are given to you. But true knowledge comes from within. Your inner knowing will never fail you. Unlike beliefs when you realize you are a spiritual being having a human experience, you begin to witness miracles manifest in your life shutting down the inner dialogue. The constant chatter of beliefs and judgments is crucial. It's about getting to a peaceful place within in this unified field of all possibilities you will know that all things are possible. Conquering the ego or slaying self-importance is essential. It's about understanding that the ego is the action of your beliefs in the physical world when you shift away from self-importance and focus on serving others. Miracles happen to trust in yourself, is to trust in the wisdom that created you when you let go of doubt, quiet the inner dialogue and conquer the ego. You will see the miracles you've conceived of manifest in your life when your belt fits comfortably. You don't notice it. The same goes for your shoes and clothes. When they fit well, it's as if you're not wearing them. The more aware you are of these items, the less properly they are made or fit. However, we often resist this notion. If we're unaware of our presence, it feels like we're missing out on everything we desire to know that we know. If we're happy but unaware of, it seems equivalent to not being happy at all. True happiness is when you are happy and conscious of it representing the fullness of life's joy. Conversely, the downside is being miserable and knowing it. Interestingly, some people experience misery without even realizing it. It's easy enough to stand still. The difficulty is to walk without touching the ground, because in the state of being in accord with the source, there is a certain feeling of weightlessness similar to what people feel when they get into outer space or go deep into the ocean. This is, of course, connected with the sensation that you're not carrying your body around. Warriors are people who think of all the variables beyond their control and what might happen when you make a decision. And it works out, all right. I think very little of it has much to do with your conscious intent and control. But somehow or other, you are able to decide and control things more harmoniously. If you delegate authority, the more you let go of it and trust it, as if it were quite other than you. The more you realize the inseparable identity of self and other. If you try to find the identity of self and other by subjecting other to self, it won't work. If, on the other hand, you find it through giving self, that is, control over to the other and trusting that you may make a mistake, you may make a bad gamble. But in the long run, you're acting on a principle which has the backing of evolution whenever you voluntarily relinquish control. Essentially, when you stop clinging to yourself, you gain access to a new kind of power. Reaching a state of desirelessness occurs when you don't know what you want. There are two stages of not knowing the initial stage where you haven't thought deeply about what you want. And the final stage where true understanding emerges. The principle here is that letting go of control provides access to power because we often waste energy on self-defense trying to manage and force things to conform to our will, when you stop exerting this control, the previously wasted energy becomes available to you. In this sense, this liberated energy aligns you with the divine principle. However, if you act as if you were God by not trusting anyone dictating terms and trying to control everything you lose, this divine energy, such actions are merely self-defense mechanisms. The key principle is that the more you give away control, the more energy and power come back to you, can only overcome that fear of giving it away by realizing you better give it away, because there's no way of holding on to it the fact that everything is dissolving constantly, that we're all falling apart, we're all in a process of constant death, is a greatest assistance. The fact that everything is in decay is your helper. You don't have to let go because there's nothing to hold on to. It's achieved for you by the process of nature. From that point of view, there is nothing to do to attain wisdom, nothing at all. But that's very difficult to understand. Because a lot of people, when they hear that, there's nothing to do, try to do nothing. You can't because you are karma. And karma means action. You can't do nothing. The thing you believe you are searching for is actually what you're doing. 
It's the essence of you. This concept can be elusive, like trying to bite your own teeth or look into your own eyes. You can't directly perceive it because it's always just out of sight. Always behind your direct awareness. From an optical perspective, your head is a blank space. Neither light nor dark, positioned right in the middle of your perception of everything, our society often glorifies the ideals of force and control, teaching us that success belongs to those with unwavering determination, a strong will and a clear plan of action, who refuse to let anything impede their progress, while setting goals and working diligently to achieve them has its benefits this approach can also lead to stress anxiety and eventual burnout this is where the concept of acting without forcing becomes relevant this philosophy emphasizes the importance of being fully present in the moment and responding to the circumstances around us rather than trying to manipulate the world to fit our desires it encourages us to Flow with the natural course of events, finding harmony and balance and reducing unnecessary strain. This philosophy is applicable to various aspects of life, whether it's work relationships or personal growth. The philosophy of acting without forcing, also known as Wu Fines. Its origins in ancient Chinese philosophy, specifically in Taoism, it teaches us to act in harmony with the Toao, which represents the natural order of the universe in practical terms, this means relinquishing the urge to forcefully control situations or outcomes. Instead, we should allow things to unfold naturally, following the path of least resistance. Now, envision yourself as the protagonist in your own life, where your everyday routine becomes a personal performance, just as an actor must establish a deep connection with their character and embody their role. You must forge a profound connection with your true self and wholeheartedly embrace your unique identity. The concept is straightforward instead of trying to control every aspect of your life. Cultivate the ability to let go and trust in the natural unfolding of events while taking action when necessary is important. There is no need to force your will upon the world. Remain open to opportunities that arise, and trust in the supportive nature of the universe. This means developing the ability to listen to your intuition and believing that everything will manifest in due time. Be receptive to new possibilities and experiences, even if they differ from your preconceived plans. Admittedly, this is easier said than done as society conditions us to believe that we must relentlessly push, strive, and force our way through life. However, when you release the need for excessive control, you open yourself up to an entirely new way of living. You can find tranquility and happiness in the present moment, rather than constantly chasing something that may never materialize. The universe operates on the principle of least possible action, whereby every element moves with the least amount of energy and time required, whether it's the orbit of a planet the pulsation of light or the motion of your own body, all operate in accordance with this principle. When you align your efforts with this principle, rather than resist it, you can accomplish extraordinary feats with reduced exertion. When you force outcomes, you squander your valuable time and energy. However, by harmonizing with the flow of life, you can effortlessly and Gracefully achieve your aspirations. The key lies in trusting the process, relinquishing control, and allowing yourself to move naturally. This approach enables you to progress in an organic, unforced manner by acting without forcing. You can accomplish tasks without succumbing to stress or overwhelm. Clear your mind and free yourself from constraints. Become like water. Adapt flow according to the circumstances. And move harmoniously with the natural rhythms of the universe you will find that everything seamlessly falls into place with little effort when you struggle against life's currents. Take a deep breath. Release your grip and flow like water infused with renewed strength and purpose. Although meditation is very simple, it is easy to get confused by the many different descriptions of meditative practices. Forget them all and just sit in silence. Be very still and relaxed without trying to do anything. Allow thoughts, feelings, and concept steps to pass through your mind without drawing your attention. Do not cling to or manipulate these ideas as they come and go. 
Once you have learned to let thoughts pass through you, they will begin to slow down and almost disappear behind this flow of thoughts. You will encounter a sensation that forms the basis of meditation. When you reach this silent place behind your internal dialogues, let your awareness grow stronger. You can simply rest in this stillness, because there is nothing to do. There is no need to produce or stop anything. Meditating in this simple and receptive way gradually enhances the meditative quality, making your experience more immediate after each meditation. The light of this experience will remain and strengthen. With practice, meditation will come naturally. Like the morning sun once touched, inner attention will radiate effortlessly. However, finding this inner attention requires daily practice. So it is important to set aside time for meditation as we persevere in our practice. We will know by examining our lives if we are on the right path and if our meditation is effective when our mind is serene and more loving when our emotions are steady and stable and our life flows smoothly. Then we know we are progressing the inner silence that springs from meditation alleviates the tension of these times of rapid change where it is so easy to lose our sense of stability and balance by trying to do too many things in too short a time, we can become agitated and disturbed. However, when our mind is relaxed and quiet, life becomes simple and balanced, free from extremes that unsettle us. When we are balanced, we are healthy. The body is relaxed and the mind is serene. In this state, we become free from confusion, disappointments, and illusions and we learn to navigate life based on our meditation experiences, be content to progress gradually, step by step, maintaining strong motivation and perseverance in your meditation practice. It is a profound truth that in the development of meditation, the slowest path is often the fastest, when we cultivate our meditation practice carefully and without forcing it. The results will always be evident. Although we may not notice daily growth, it is constant and enduring. This path is not like a torrential rain that forces us to seek shelter. It is more like the snow that gently covers the earth. Make your meditation relaxed and open, without watching or forcing it. Just let everything be. Nature has much to teach us. All you need to do is open your eyes and observe the changes in nature. Follow a consistent course with the four seasons behaving in an orderly fashion, demonstrating that everything has its place in the universe in truth. All human affairs follow the same. Principles as the workings of heaven and earth. We often wonder why things happen the way they do and become frustrated or disappointed when events don't meet our expectations. However, those who are successful often don't know in advance that they will succeed, and those who fail often don't know beforehand that they will fail. So why waste time and effort anticipating success or failure when it only causes anxiety and apprehension by not anticipating success or failure? We prepare our elves to accept any outcome. We won't be excessively elated if things turn out as we want, nor will we be unhappy if they don't. Understanding the nature of success and failure allows us to avoid being overly sad if things go wrong or excessively joyous when things go right. Free from emotional swings, we can calmly and composedly handle whatever comes our way. We only worry about whether our lives will be long or short, or if we will be rich or poor when we do not understand that events come and go on their own, and that worrying cannot change them. We should therefore accept the flow of events and abandon our worries, whether we attribute luck to the act of a god or nature, or to the whims of a powerful man, it plays a significant role in our destiny, and if we can recognize its role, we will not be so frustrated or upset if we have bad luck nor overly excited and proud. When we have good luck, Many things happen without our active intervention when the momentum of events is too strong. The best course of action is to step aside and avoid being swept away. Understanding the role that fate plays in success and failure allows. The wise to know when to act and when to stop. Those who accept the natural flow of events remain unaffected by what happens around them. They do not respond with anger or joy, attraction or repulsion, fear or calm. 
Conversely, those who reject the natural flow of events are constantly worried about success and failure gain and loss approval or rejection, even if they blindfold themselves or block out the noise. They will still feel tension and anxiety. Only by accepting the natural flow of events can one avoid worrying about life and in death or being anxious about praise or blame to truly live in this world. We must let life take its course and make the best use of the time we have now. In today's fast-paced world, we think too much, seek too much, and want too much. Forgetting the joy of simply being deeply realized that the present moment is all you have, and make the now. The main focus of your life, a simple practice, is maintaining presence while walking. The next time you walk from one place to another, practice looking and listening without thinking. You don't always need to conceptualize, interpret, or label everything that comes into your consciousness. Just look and listen without thinking. People tend to create labels for Everything they feel, perceive, and experience maintaining an almost constant conflict with situations and people through relationships of like SL dis, like you don't need to do this, just let each moment be as it is when you accept what is, you reach a deeper level where your inner state no longer depends on the mind's judgments of what is good or bad by saying yes to all situations in life and accepting the present. Moment as it is, you experience profound inner peace. This moment always has been and always will be full with nothing to do, but to let life be there is much suffering and sadness when you believe that every thought passing through your mind is true. It is not the situations themselves that cause unhappiness, but rather your thoughts about them, the interpretations you create and the stories you tell yourself. Generate this unhappiness if you can recognize this, you will stop identifying with these thoughts, knowing yourself as the being beneath the thinker, the silence beneath the mental noise, and the love and joy beneath the pain brings freedom, salvation, and enlightenment. The ego does not recognize that the source of all energy lies within us, so it seeks it externally. The constant inner dialogue transforms into a civilization obsessed with form, unaware of the most important dimension of human existence. The sacred, the silence, the formless, the divine, let go of excessive thinking and observe how everything changes when we stop compulsively labeling things, when we let go of attachment to our story, we become alive to the present moment. Presence emerges and replaces the conceptual notion of the self. We become very simple. The need to be special no longer exists. The essence of meditation is stillness becoming aware of the space between words, and the most important achievement in our lives is the ability to be still. Wisdom comes from the ability to maintain inner calm and silence. Just see and hear nothing more is needed. Keeping calm, looking, and listening activates the real intelligence within you. Let inner calm guide your words and actions. When we are silent, we are who we were. Before we temporarily assume this physical and mental form we call a person, we are equally who we will be when our form disappears. Acceptance and surrender become much easier when you realize that all experiences are temporary and that the world cannot offer anything of lasting value by accepting and surrendering you. Continue to interact with people and partake in experiences and activities, but without the desires and fears of the self-centered, you no longer expect a situation, person, place, or fact to satisfy or make you happy. You accept the imperfect nature of everything. Ironically, when you stop making impossible demands, all situations, people and circumstances become more satisfactory, harmonious and peaceful by letting go of the need for control and the expectation of perfection, you discover a deeper sense of contentment and tranquility in every aspect of life. There are situations where no answer or explanation is satisfying, and in those moments, life can seem to lose its meaning when someone in despair asks for your help and you don't know what to do or say fully. Accepting that you don't know can bring peace by surrendering you. Stop fighting for an answer with your limited mind and allow a greater intelligence to work through you. Even thought can benefit from this as this greater intelligence flows into it and inspires it.
It's necessary to be relaxed and at peace with the lack of understanding. This is how answers come. When you stop resisting internally, you open yourself up to a consciousness free from conditioning, which is infinitely greater than the human mind. This vast intelligence can then express itself through you, helping both internally and externally, often. When you stop resisting internally, things improve. The will that flows into what you do will no longer be ego-oriented. The small will must give way to a more powerful will that can handle the situation. However, you must first leave the ego behind for right action. To emerge, they no longer identifies with form thought or emotion, and you recognize yourself as something formless, the space of consciousness. Now observe this moment. Observe how the mind classifies this moment, and how this process of classification, this constant dictating of judgments, creates pain and unhappiness. By observing the mind's mechanisms, you step outside its patterns of resistance and can then allow the present moment to be, this will give you a glimpse of the inner state free from external conditions, the state of true deep peace. Surrender to this moment, not to a story through which you interpret this moment. Surrendering means giving up, wanting to understand and feeling okay with what you don't know. When you surrender, your notion of yourself changes the high no longer identifies with a reaction or a mental judgment, and becomes a space around that reaction or judgment, open up to this unconditioned awareness practice. Looking and listen, listening without thinking. Maintain inner calm and silence. Then let life be everything changes. Nothing is permanent. All material things, ideas, thoughts, character and personality, moral principles, cultures, economic conditions, political situations, and everything that exists are in constant flux. Everything changes, nothing is permanent, all things in life and the world are in constant transformation, therefore do not become attached to them. Everything changes, do not attach. Detachment is one of the most important principles. In fact, the path to enlightenment is a journey of detachment. Many of life's problems arise from attachment. We become angry, worried, greedy, make unfounded complaints and develop various comp FES. All these sources of unhappiness, tension, stubbornness, and sadness are due to attachment. If you have a problem or worry, examine yourself, and you will discover that the root cause is attachment. It's true that money has its importance, but the person who is attached to it becomes greedy and a slave to money. It's very easy to become attached to our beauty, our skills or our possessions, and thus feel superior to others. It's equally easy to become attached to our ugliness, our lack of skills or our poverty, and thus feel inferior to others. Attachment to favorable conditions leads to greed and false optimism, while attachment to unfavorable conditions leads to resentment and pessimism. Undoubtedly, our attachment to things, conditions, feelings, and ideas is much more problematic than we imagine when we fall ill. We even become attached to the illness. It's better not to do that. All illnesses will be cured, except one which is death when you are sick. Accept the illness and do your best to recover. Accept the illness and transcend it. Acceptance is transcendence. Detachment is not disinterest, indifference, or escape. We should not become indifferent to life's problems. We should not flee from life. One cannot escape from it when being sincere life and its problems must be faced head on. But they are not things to which we should attach. Everything we do should be done with sincerity, honesty, and our full effort. Once it is done, let it be. Do not attach to it many people cling to the past or future, neglecting the important present moment while remembering happy. Memories and planning for the future are parts of life attaching to them, and forgetting to live in the present brings unhappiness and disharmony. We must live the best now with full responsibility. Life is mutable. Everything changes and all conditions are temporary. Therefore, let go of all things. Let abuses, anger, and criticism come and go when the sun shines. Enjoy it when the rain falls. Enjoy it. Let all things in. 
Life come and go. This is a secret of life that prevents us from becoming upset or neurotic when we are truly able to see and understand life, its reality, its value and beauty, as well as its problems. We are able to accept life dynamically and walk its path with appreciation and gratitude. The world is an ocean of pain and fear, of anxiety and despair. Pleasures are like fish, few and fleeting. They come rarely and leave. Quickly, every physical or mental pleasure requires an instrument, and these instruments, whether physical or mental, are material and subject to fatigue. And where the pleasure they provide is necessarily limited in both intensity and duration. Generally, you must be sad to appreciate joy, and joyful to understand sadness. True happiness has no cause and cannot disappear due to a lack of stimulus. It is not the opposite of affliction. It encompasses all affliction and suffering pain is the foundation of all pleasures you seek them, because you suffer. Conversely, the very pursuit of pleasure is the cause of pain. It is a vicious cycle acting out of desire and fear is slavery. Acting out of love is freedom when desire and fear are extinguished. The ties that bind you also end it is emotional involvement. The pattern of likes and dislikes that we call character and temperament that creates the bonds that bind us do not fear freedom from desire. And fear, it allows you to live a life so different from everything you know, so much more intense and interesting, that by truly losing everything you gain, everything what you seek is already within you, do not need help, only guidance. Seeing reality is as simple as seeing your own face in a mirror. However, the mirror must be clear and true to reflect reality. A quiet mind is needed, undistorted by desires and fears, free from ideas and opinions, clear on all levels. Be clear and silent, detached and attentive, and everything will happen by itself. What is happening now is a projection of your mind. A weak mind cannot control its own projections. Therefore, be aware of your mind and its projections you cannot. Not control what you do not know, but knowledge brings power in practice. It is very simple to control yourself. Know yourself, discover all that you are not body feelings, thoughts, ideas, time, space, being and non-being, nothing concrete or abstract that you can point to, is you simply see the person you imagine yourself to be as part of the world you perceive within your mind, and look at the mind from the outside, because you are not. The mind remain calm and observe what comes to the surface of your mind. Your only problem is your urge to self-identify with whatever you perceive. Give up this habit. Remember that you are not what you perceive and use your power of detached vigilance. See yourself in everything that lives and your behavior will reflect this. Vision. Continuously. Observe yourself, especially your mind. Moment by moment, without missing anything, this witnessing is essential for distinguishing between the self and the non-self develop the attitude of witnessing. And you will discover through your own experience that detachment brings control. The state of witnessing is full of power. There is nothing passive about it. If you are angry or suffering, separate yourself from the anger and pain and observe. Them externalization is the first step toward liberation. Physical events will continue to happen, but by themselves, they have no importance. Only the mind matters. Your mind is only on things, people and ideas never on itself, focus on. Yourself become aware of your own existence. See how you function. Observe the motives and results of your actions. Study the prism and you have inadvertently built around yourself by knowing what you are not. You will come to know yourself. The path back to yourself involves refusal and rejection. One thing is certain. The real is not imaginary. It is not a product of the mind. The real is beyond you. R. Beyond once you understand that nothing perceptible or conceivable can be yourself, you are free from your imagination seeing everything as an imagination. Born of desire is necessary for self-realization. We lose reality for lack of attention and create the unreal through excess imagination.
Desires are just waves in the mind. You know a wave when you see one. Liberation from desires means this. The compulsion to satisfy them is absent. If you could only remain silent, free from memories and expect expectations, you would be able to discern the beauty of the patterns of events. It is your agitation that causes chaos. Do not fear what seems barren, believe me. It is the satisfaction of desires that generate suffering. Being free from desires is bliss. Fulfilled desires only generate more desires. Remaining free from desires and content with what comes naturally is a very fertile state. It is the precondition of fullness. Once you understand that there is nothing in this world you can truly call your own, you will begin to look at it from the outside as you would a play on stage or an image on a screen, admiring and appreciating, but remaining undisturbed. You must learn to think and feel this way, or you will remain indefinitely at the personal level of desire and fear, gaining and losing, growing and decaying. Once you realize that the world is a distorted view of reality and not what it seems you become free from your obsessions simply know that you are beyond and above all things, and thoughts stop constructing. Concepts and remain silent and attentive. Dedicate yourself to this seriously, and all will go well for you. In peace and silence, you grow being quiet and detached, beyond the reach of all self-interest and selfish. Consideration is an essential condition for liberation. You may call it death to me. It is living with the utmost intensity and meaning, for I am one with life and its totality and fullness. Intensity and Harmony what more do you want?